I think both of them, I think such a big result, but also such a big performance. Uh, the big result obviously comes from scoring four goals and keeping a clean sheet. I don't think it would have been out of place if we'd scored a few more, but uh, I'm more than happy with, with the way we performed today and, and how the players went about the job. those four goals it's his sorry we didn't get you there you'd gone Ian go again go again Ian sorry okay I think I was yeah okay um, Mikel Antonio has, has scored those four goals for you um, it's his first hat trick he scored two in the previous three games how pleased are you with with his performance the way he's playing particularly since the restart uh, he's, he's been excellent because we've been without Seb Haller and we've been really limited on on some of our options in that position. But I think Mick's developing with it. He's got better with his uh, his link-up play. He's powerful. He can do a lot of good things. And, you know, he possibly should have scored another one, if not two, in midweek as well. So uh, today's been good for him. Today's been a good good day for him and, and really good that he got the goals. And there's not many people who do score four goals in a Premier League match. Look, as far as you're concerned, does, does that set up? A standard now for the remaining matches. What, what what does that do for your confidence going into the final three games? Well, I thought we played well from the start of the game today, but uh, the players were made aware that you know we have to keep our standards high, and we were a bit disappointed that we didn't do get more out of the game in midweek. But we were disappointed more with, with overall some of some of our play and what we done. But I thought today we were very good right from the first minute. You know the players. <laughs> went about the job correctly and uh, made it difficult for Norwich and we got the rewards from that. I mean, as far as West Ham fans are concerned, um, I mean, if, if, if you play like that in your remaining matches, do they have any concerns? Do they have anything to be worried about? Well, I think we've played very close to that in a lot of the games. I think our standard of performances have, have been pretty good. Uh, the effort and the commitment the players have been shown is immense. I only have to look at the... You know, their figures and their running stats, the players, it's been it's been tremendous. It really has since we've come back. Uh, but as I said earlier on, in the early part of it, you know, we had a couple of tough games at the start. But since then, we started to pick up. And uh, it was probably only midweek where we were disappointed that we didn't uh, we didn't take more points from it. How, how big a match is, is your next one? You play Watford next. Everyone's a big one, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's sort of yeah, but... question now. And... Uh, you know, everybody told me today was a big one. Everybody told me Newcastle was a must win. So uh, every game's a must win when you're a manager and every game's a must win. But I take your point with the question that, you know, we're, we're in a, a, a position where we're, we're out in front a little bit. We're noses in front. We'll have to do our job to make sure that we're a Premier League team and we'll prepare and try and be as ready as we can be. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Jack, so I can see you next. Um, hi, David. Congratulations. Hi, Jack. Thank you. Um, brought Mark Noble back in today, but played him in a number 10 role, which I think he played against Spurs as well. We've not seen him there too often at West Ham. What does he bring you in that position? Well, I went, I went out now, Colm, at a number 10. We just asked him to play a little bit advanced of the other ones. And uh, we felt that today, with the way Norwich would be setting up and, and other teams, we think he's, he's good. We think we... It's, it's more to do with Mark Noble's leadership and responsibility he takes with the players on the ball, you know, takes responsibility on the pitch. I thought he was as good as MD today, Mark Noble. I thought he was I thought he was very, very good. And uh, But I don't think I've seen anything less than that since I've come back. I've got to say, I think his level of performances have been, have been really good. Thanks, Jack. Rob from The Sun. David, um, Norwich uh, didn't spend a lot. They stuck to their principles coming up. Uh, what did you make of their, their season, the top flight? Should they have invested more? Or do you think it's important not to bankrupt, bankrupt the club? Yeah, well, I think, I think, uh, I think you, I don't know if you heard what I said yesterday in the press conference. My feeling is, is that I, I really hope that football isn't about uh, every club, whoever's got the most money wins the league or whoever wins. I think, I think it's important that football does it other ways and it can be done. I think I admire Norwich for the, for the way they tried to do it. They didn't spend a lot of money, but... I think they've tried to stick with the manager. They've not changed the way they want to play. That's been their choice to do so. But I don't. I think if it's all about money, then we've got so many clubs can't win it. So we've got to dream that it's not that. But uh, unfortunately, as you probably know, it's looking like if you've got lots of money to spend, it gives you a better chance of winning. Thanks, Rob. Donovan? 
Hi, David. Um, Hi, I was very pleased with the way that you limited Norwich uh, today to very, very little. Yeah. No, I thought we, we limited them to not an awful lot of opportunities at all. And, and I've watched Norwich quite a bit, and I think that they've created chances in most games, you know, but I thought today we'd done a good job. Uh, uh, Lucas had a good save just before half time. But apart from that, you know, we had we'd covered most things, I think, in the game. So I have to give great credit to the players. And for us, you know, we've not had many clean sheets, and it's something which I don't like and I don't like saying, but you know, I'm having to drive it into the players that we're going to have to do much better in those areas. But to get a clean sheet today and score four goals was really pleasing. Thanks. Adrian for the mail. Hi, David. Um How just wondered, as well as the, as well as the four goals from Mikel, we did a lot of stuff that you might expect from a more natural sort of number nine. What have you kind of said to him about playing that role? And is that somewhere you actually see long-term in, in possibly sort of taking on? I've probably seen him being that for a long time, to be honest. You know, everybody's telling me he's a winger, he's a wide player. And I'm not saying that he's not, because I think he can play that perfectly well. But I think I think if you ask him, I think he's probably enjoying it because, uh, you know, he's getting goals, which is always really good. Uh, and I think that uh, for, for what he's got, his power, his pace... I think at the moment he's a big help to us. And uh, you know, while we've not had Seb, while we've been a little bit short in, in areas like that, he's done a great job. Thanks. Gary from The Times. I just ask you, David. I mean, obviously earlier in the season, um, Mikko had the hamstring injuries. He's always had hamstring injuries. What have you done with him since sort of working with him this time around to kind of try and keep that, uh, you know, keep that sort of clear? Well, when he when he when I first got back, he was still injured and he was only coming back, and we were struggling to get him through sixty minutes. Uh, but actually, I think lockdown, and I also think when we've come back, we we've we worked him hard. He done all the work with every player done. He, he didn't miss any sessions, you know, and all the hard and the, the the difficult ones. I think if Mick can get his capacity up, he's got the capabilities to do that. Prior to his arriving, he wasn't playing enough 90 minutes. He wasn't in condition to do so. But now he's playing 90 minutes comfortably. So generally, his fitness has improved. Uh, he, at the moment, touch wood, we're not seeing any signs of any hamstring problems. But I do think that's because he's in much better condition. And I think the longer he keeps himself at the level he is, then he'll, he'll suffer less and less hamstring injuries. Thanks, Gary. Sam? Hi, David. Hi there, Sam. When you were last here at West Ham, you had the maverick in Marko Anatovic that uh, 12, scored 12 goals and helped keep you up this season. Mikhail has scored six since the restart. He's kind of almost taken on that Marko Anatovic role. And also you've converted someone from a winger into a striker again, a bit of a managerial masterstroke for me. Well, I, in many ways, I'm, I think he is a winger at times, but I actually see that where he's at in his career, he, he looks like being a centre forward for us. But I've got to say, I, I really enjoyed hitting Marko Anoutovic because he, he made some difference with his ability and what he could do. And I have to say that Mickey Antonio is getting us the goals. I mean, the opening couple of games we were, we were void of chances, but I can still think of Mick, Mick getting played through and Pablo getting a chance in those early games as well. But yet you would have to say, like today, Burnley, you know, before that, we, we scored three against uh, Chelsea, I think it was it, or Newcastle. So you'd have to say that it was only the Burnley game where we actually created we can score. So we've been looking like we can score. And that's been coming mainly from Mickey, but certainly from the other players as well. Thanks. So the other managers ready to come in. So just Ian, last one, please. Yeah, um, me again, David. Look, um, today we've had the very sad news about Jack Charlton. Uh, he was remembered before kickoff. I, I, I just wonder whether you have a few words that you'd like to say in tribute to Jack. Well, I would, I would say... I didn't know Jack that well. I've been across him a few times, but I heard great stories about Jack from from my, my good friend Jimmy Lumsden, who's worked with me for years and was at Leeds United, and they talk so fondly of Jack and and the great Leeds team. And they used to talk about him wanting to take the ball at the back, and so many of the good players, Johnny Giles and all that, wanted the ball, and Billy Bremner. So they used to tell me fond stories about that and about Jack Charon. But today, I think my my thoughts are with Sir Bobby and Norma who were, were, uh, were both very, very good to me at Manchester United. So, you know, my thoughts are with them. They've been a great footballing family uh, and for the country, you know, and also for the Republic. So you'd have to say it's a big miss to football, but uh, I give my best wishes to all the Charlton family and uh, especially to Sir Bobby and Norma. 
Thanks very much, everyone.